this is Rachel with Fiona Sandwich Patterns and in this video we are going to be sewing together the Ranger hat and for the sake of length of video I have gone ahead and I have sewn um, all of these together and we're going to trim them together um, and then we're going to sew them together so if you have not already go ahead and sew your A B and C blocks it uses the same method where you start with the first block um, if you turn your template over, the right side would be facing up. And then the wrong sides of the template, which is the underside under here, and the wrong side of the fabric would be touching. And I just put a little bit of glue here and then attach the first piece in A1. Then the next thing that you will do is you're going to um, attach the next piece. If you would flip it over, it would be face down. Um, and I have step-by-step -step instructions on how I have done this. Um, you can look at the National Park block uh, sign block or the mountain block. Both of those um, have the same process. Um, you'll just go through all of them. You'll sew them in order. And then you'll get to this stage and you'll be ready to cut. So let's talk a little bit about the ruler that I have. Let me grab a piece of paper so you can see. So I use one side of my ruler and it has a quarter of an inch uh, demarcation on one side. The other side does not have the same dashed lines. On my ruler, this one, um, one side is exactly a quarter of an inch and the other one is not. So I always use the same side of the ruler. You can put a little piece of tape there. You could mark it with a Sharpie, whatever you want. I have um, even some little stickies um, some little rubber grips so that helps me know that this is the side that I always use. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, line up the solid sew line and the uh, quarter of an inch um, demarcation is going to be on top. And I don't worry about where the dotted line is on the outside of the ruler. All I am focused on is that the quarter of an inch marking on my ruler is right on top of the sew line because that's, you know, it, if we weren't paper piecing, we would be using a quarter of an inch sew line anyway. So then you're going to trim and create your quarter of an inch. Um, and then you will repeat this on all sides. And if you look carefully, you can see that sometimes the cut is right along. Pardon me, allergies are crazy. Um, sometimes the cut is right on top of the, um, the dashed line. Sometimes it's not. And the reason that I use the quarter of an inch um, on my ruler is that sometimes this is not super accurate. If my printer doesn't print um, the right way, if maybe, um, you know, I don't know, sometimes printers get a little bit silly. You know, I lined up this on the side and, or on top of the line rather, and there's a little bit of extra room. So I don't worry too much about that. Um, I don't cut right along the dashed line. Um, because I know that if I'm using my ruler and I'm always using the same side of the ruler, I'm always going to have the same results. And if you're off by a, a tiny, tiny amount, that'll be fine. Um, if you're off by, you know, like a sixteenth of an inch or so, make sure that you go back and trim that up so that that is lining up correctly. And sometimes on larger blocks, I don't cut the outside pieces, um, like these outside. I will cut the inside, but for these smaller pieces, um, it is a little bit easier to just go ahead and cut around the outside. So, One of the reasons that I don't 
trim the outsides on larger blocks is because there's a lot more shifting of fabric. So I find that this, um, it doesn't always work to trim around all of the sides with a larger block. I find it easier to just uh, trim just the inside and then I trim up the outside. So this is one that I think I'm going to look and see if maybe I didn't line it up totally correct. And it only, it cut off a little bit extra, but that'll be okay. Okay, so um, when you lay your block out and you look at your diagram, it's going to show you the front. So your um, side pieces are going to be flipped. So the diagram shows the front and we sew on the back. So always think, I'm sewing with my right sides together. So as you're laying out paper piecing, you want to make sure that this creates the mirror image of your diagram sheet. And this one is pretty simple because we only have two sides. So if you would do it like this, you wouldn't be getting quite a square block and the lines aren't going the right direction. So this one is a little bit easier to tell that you're not going in the right direction, but there are some that are definitely more complicated. So I have two different tricks. My first trick is um, I line up what is going on on the inside of the block. So what I have going on in here, I want to make sure that this part is going to line up and I don't worry so much about the outsides because I have you know, a quarter inch seam allowance to give me a little bit of room. So the first thing that I generally do is I kind of line up where I think they should go and then I pinch and I look and I see, well that's pretty close right here. I'm just pinching right along the, um, the seam allowance, right where those two pieces are going to meet, right here in A8 and this sew line here. So then that is maybe a little bit too much and then I would move it down until I get it where I want it to be. So that's option number one and then I pin. I don't use the clips um, because they bunch up on me and I'm not really a fan. So the next thing that you can do, I love this Project Wool pressing mat. This is the pressing mat that I use and I recommend. I have another one underneath and the only thing that I use it for is to <laughs> create enough distance um, from my workspace so that it doesn't um, have too much steam underneath and delaminate my cabinet. But this is great because you can um, press on it at a really high heat and I steam on it, I just treat it as I normally would. So what you would want to do is both of your pieces are together and it doesn't matter if you sew A and C together first or B and A together. Since I have A and C here, I'm going to sew them together first and you put a pin at the corner of where these two sew lines will be and hopefully it m matches up on the back end. So then what I would do, I want to make sure that my pin is straight up and down and I stick a pin right here. So then what I do is I put a pin in the next corner, same way that I did before, and then I will lift it up and see that the pin is in the right place. And I'll put it back down and then I'll place my next pin here to hold. Some people really like using the either binder clips or they like using the wonder clips and I don't like either because it creates a little bit of, a, of some bulk and it makes it a little bit more tricky to sew. So I don't care for that. But you know, sewing is all about finding out what works best for you and this works best for me so I continue with it. Okay. So the next thing that we are going to do is um, make sure that your um, needle is in the center of your pressing foot and we're going to sew right along the solid line. I don't move my needle. I keep it in the same place because 
um, it is going to be creating the quarter of an inch because we've already cut the quarter of an inch and we're going to sew right on the solid line. And one thing I try to always do is I check before I remove any of these pieces um, because I want to make sure that my seams have lined up. And I worry about what's going on inside of the block rather than do I have straight edges on the outside of the block because it doesn't matter if the outside of your block is nice and straight if the inside is wonky. And if the inside is wonky, it's going to annoy you. <clears throat> and then you'll get really upset and it's just better to take care of that. Um, I'll write it one time. So the other thing that I do is I remove all of these, um, the seam bits here, and this helps um, with the block pressing flatter. And then the other thing is I take out these tiny pieces. Now you can only do this, you can't take out A3 on the other side, you can only take out the ones that are on the side that I've just sewn. Um, because I don't have any reason for these anymore and it's going to become a pain in the rear to remove them later. So these longer ones I'm not going to worry about, but these really thin ones, because I find that it's easier to press the seams open, I like to remove them beforehand. So just like this, and then these ones are large enough that we'll be able to remove later. And um, I like to press the seams open uh, for a couple reasons. It re really reduces a lot of bulk and this is one that is wanting to press in one direction. So um, we're going to press this one in one direction because it wants to go in one direction. Sometimes after I've um, pressed the whole block and I've removed the papers, um, sometimes I'll, I'll move the, the way that the seams are laying um, just so that it creates a little bit of a nicer um, nicer look when the seams press open instead of when they are pressed to one side. So we're going to repeat the pin process again. And this works most of the time. See this is one that I will need to move. So we're just going to pick it up and move it over. Um, this works most of the time. If you have a block that has a lot going on inside, that would be one that I would use more of the pinching process. And again, experiment and see what method you like best, and maybe you come up with another method. I just stumbled upon this pin method just the other day. Um, and I didn't know that it was a legit thing. <laughs> okay, so same thing. Needle is in the center. Our stitch is at 1.6 or 1.5. 1.5 is my preference. Um, and then we're going to sew along the solid line. One thing that um, I have quilting gloves. And it is kind of annoying to take quilting gloves off and on, but they have this little grippy bit. You can just put the glove down and it almost, it just, it helps grip it. And I kind of think of the rubber jar openers that help open stuck lids. It kind of acts the same way. So if you have a block that is a little bit slippery, um, that might be helpful to you. So we've just sewn right along the solid line. And we're going to remove the pieces. common question I get is when do I remove all of the papers? This would be a fine time. It, this is the last seam, so you could go ahead and remove all of the papers for the block. 
Um, I prefer to remove all of the paper before I sew my blocks together and I also starch them um, once I've removed all the paper so then it's really nice and stiff. It just helps hold its shape. Okay, and then this is the other one that we're gonna press to one side. And there you have it. That is the finished Ranger hat block. I hope you love it. Um, I hope you post a picture of it on social media and I hope you tag me. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.